Not so long ago, I was having a friendly debate with my friend Osaka Syndrome. We were having a debate sort of about communism, capitalism, sort of the future of civilization, these sorts of things, standard, standard shit, your standard fair conversations. And we were, we were sort of a jovial tone, Don't Smite was there too, it was all a great fun time. And uh, at the time, Lily was making a lot of arguments for social progress towards socialism and communism, and uh, you know, making pretty well-founded, reasonable arguments about how, like, certain policy changes would help improve people's lives in material ways, and so on. And I was saying stuff like, you see, you've fallen for the meme of trying to make things better. Ah, you've fallen for the meme of thinking that things can be better, and stuff like this. And I was saying, like, uh, one of the things I was saying was, communism doesn't negate capitalism. And this was all sort of a jokey tone, so, you know, we were we were both having fun with it. But I didn't really explain myself very well. And ever since that conversation, I've been trying to think of a way where I can just explain myself well about what the fuck I'm talking about. And this is uh, a whole thing, because it's gonna be it's gonna be good for me, because in the past, I've been accused of so many things. But one of the things I've been accused of is being a goddamn leftist. Now, I need to fix this promptly. I'm not a leftist. I need to fix this. I'm, 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 what, what I am, not that that matters, what my personal fucking, not that it fucking matters, but there's not really a name for it either. You know, I'm very into the idea of self-theory, um, you know, taking everything from any ideology, just apply, just stealing it, just stealing it and making your own self-theory. If I had to describe myself, I've used this term in the past. I wonder if I can frame myself better as well, that would be good. Describe myself and frame myself. If I had to do it, I've used this term in the past. It's not really, doesn't describe everything. In fact, it's quite lacking, but it's fairly decent. And that is uh, unconditional post-civ, right? Uh, so this is, the unconditional is stolen from unconditional accelerationism and post-civ, post-civilization. But that doesn't really explain everything, but I'll try and explore a little bit of what I meant by first let's start off with uh, communism doesn't negate capitalism. Why not just be a Marxist? There are various problems I see with Marxism, not least the facts, you know, historical facts about it put, being put into practice and leading to, you know, significant problems. And some people will claim that's all CIA propaganda. Some of it's CIA propaganda, but not all of it's CIA propaganda. Uh, but either way, none of that matters. That None of that matters. It doesn't matter that I can't possibly be a Marxist because I am not. A, don't really like dialectical materialism very much. None of that matters either. There's more important stuff, fundamental stuff, as to, well, if you want to change the world, why not just be a Marxist? Why not just be a leftist? You know, why you got to be this weird guy? Well, here's why. Because <laughs> communism doesn't really negate capitalism. In fact, it extends it into something that is more capitalist, than capitalism. It's a weird concept to explain, particularly to people who aren't used to thinking like this, because leftists and Marxists and these types, they don't like thinking like this. They, they've never done it before, and it's a weird way of seeing the world that they're not used to. So I have to try and be very careful with my language. In fact, do you know what? I'm not even going to attempt to try and describe this. I'm going to leave it to a literal Chad, a literal Chad, Chad A. Hogg. In order to understand this, I think we have to go all the way back to Hegel. So, Abir and Zizek are historically correct when they mention these things. However, there's a very important question to ask regarding what over cap over overcoming capitalism, excuse me, through accelerating it might actually mean. In the Marxist view, there's a tacit understanding that capitalism's collapse occurs within a certain dialectical framework. It's more like a productive beginning than a merely negative destruction. And that stems from the very different way that Hegel had of thinking about negation in itself. This is something which you almost cannot um, talk about with, an, with a single English term. You have to go all the way back to the German. Because Hegel's Aufhebung um, has a triple meaning, which is hard to capture with, with, within one word in any other language. This is why Martin Heidegger, in his lectures on phenomenology spirit, brought up three Latin terms. You have tolere, which is to remove or terminate the initial illusion. So you, you are, in a certain sense, negating the initial view you had of it, which turned out to be wrong, to turn out to be illusory. You are removing it. However, you're also 
preserving it. The second Latin term, conservare, means to include it within the experience. This is a this is why Hegel was interested in going beyond abstract negation, which simply says no without further qualification. However, you also have the third Latin term, eleware, which means to lift up to a higher level of knowing. In this sense, you are negating, but also rising above the lower abstract negation to a higher determinate negation, which negates, but also preserves and elevates, as I said. Under this view, um, overcoming capitalism is similarly more than just abstract negation. You go beyond capitalism to something which is, paradoxically, more like it than it is itself. Communism and socialism are basically... Um, more capitalism than capitalism is itself. Um, it's capitalism without the nasty side effects. You don't have the um, exploitation, supposedly, that um, pays workers less than they're worth in order to generate surplus value um, for the for the capitalist who owns the most means of production. You guys know this stuff. Um, but it's still essentially industrial, and it's still essentially progress-oriented. Deleuze was interested in intensities and qualitative leaps. Um, Often we are inhibited from understanding what these are through mistakenly smuggling in metaphors from unrelated quantitative and extensive ideas. For example, cutting a five-foot segment of rope in half is a quantitative change of an extensive thing, arguably. However, changing from 50 degrees Fahrenheit to 100 degrees Fahrenheit cannot be understood in either of those. It's rather an intensive shift and a qualitative leap. Uh, quite fittingly, Deleuze also included accelerating from a low speed to a high speed as another example of an intensive leap cannot be understood through spatial metaphors. And indeed, the kind of accelerationism we're talking about here is more like that. Whereas for the dialectical thinker, overcoming capitalism basically means evolving it to some higher form where it's actually embodied um, less, or excuse me, more rather than less unproblematically. Um, that is to say, you're better at embodying it in the higher forms of socialism and communism. Uh, for a Deleuzean accelerationist, overcoming capitalism is not preserving it and incorporating it into some higher notion. It's more like exploding it. And it seems to me that many accelerationists are interested in accelerationism because they're interested really in what might happen afterwards. They're, they're interested in imagining what would lie on the other side of that collapse. Thanks, Chad. Um, copyright isn't real. I steal your content. Fuck you. I'm not sure if you really understand what's going on here. I hope that's done a good job. I hope, I hope, hope I've chosen good clips and whatever that you can understand what I'm talking about. Now that is all from his uh, lectures on accelerationism and Deleuze and Nick Land and these type, these type of things, right? And that is a part of my thought. Accelerationism, Nick Land, Deleuze, big part of my thought. But I'm not strictly an accelerationist or an unconditional accelerationist. I, I mean, I like it and I am to some extent, I, like I steal some ideas from them, but also I have a lot of uh, grounding and roots in anarchist theory, post-left anarchist theory. Various brain-damaged groups of people might consider me a lifestyle anarchist, but, you know, we can put those people aside because they really don't matter at all. Here's one thing I'm not. I am not an anarcho-primitivist or any kind of primitivist, but I'm not exactly allergic to the stuff. What I am is completely in favour of the total abolition of capitalism, which involves... I hate to tell you, the total abolition of civilization. But I'm not trying to return to some previous glory days. You know, I'm not, I'm not into abolishing language and art like a lot of anthems are. I'm not really into even, you know, recreating the situations that our distant, distant ancestors were in uh, before the invention of agricultural civilization. Now, there was some d dope shit going on back then. Firstly, they were doing that for like a hundred times more hundred times longer than, than agriculture has been around. They were both forager hunters, you know, for a hundred times longer than we've been, you know, farmers. So clearly that one, what, we have a lot more evidence that that type of lifestyle works very well than we do, you know, we started farming not that long ago and we've already basically destroyed the fucking planet. <laughs> we started farming not that long ago and 
on a mass, you know, on a on a large scale, long time scale, non-human time scale. Um, basically, we started farming, and then a second later, caused a fucking giant eco ecological collapse. An ecological collapse is something that's going to come up again and again because we're causing one. There's nothing we can do about it. Don't let anyone fucking trick you into thinking. We just need to switch to clean energy. Oh, once we have communism, all the carbon dioxide in the atmosphere will vanish. It will disappear. And please ignore the fact that communism is still an industrial civilization which may have slightly less impact on the environment, but, you know, still completely impossible to sustain. An environmental impossibility, ecological impossibility, as I think Linkola uses that word. I don't like Linkola, I have some problems with him, but, you know, whatever. Uh, I'm going to read some stuff now, because you might be thinking, what's so bad about civilization? So I'm going to read some stuff, because that's what I've been doing to research this video, is reading stuff. And we're going to read some stuff, and it's, and it's going to tell us reasons. We hate civilization. This, oh, by the way, this is from Take What You Want. Uh, take what you need and compost the rest, an introduction to post-civilized theory. Um, uh, the civilization is, from its foundation, unsustainable. It probably cannot be salvaged, and what's more, it would be undesirable to do so. When we're discussing civilization, we're discussing the entirety of the modern world's organizational structures and approaches to culture. We're talking about the legal and societal codes that dictate proper behavior. We're talking about the centralizing and expanding urges of political and economic empire. Civilization is destroying all life on Earth. It's unsustainable. Growth-based economies and societies always are. Civilization is nigh unredeemable. There seems to be an in infinitesimally small ch chance that civilization will drop its resource overconsumption and move rapidly towards a sustainable way of existing. And even if it did, we don't want it. It would still be an imposition to our freedom. And then it goes on to do, say, a bunch of other stuff. Um, uh, we got more. All civilizations from their foundation are destructive, oppressive, and unsustainable. The bad and civilized social structures far outweighs the good, so civilization is undesirable. Because of civilization's impact on the world, it is impossible to return to a pre-civilized state of being. Pre-civilized societies are also flawed and oppressive in many ways, and are therefore undesirable. Taken together, returning to or creating a pre-civilized society is undesirable and impossible. It is therefore desirable and necessary to imagine a post-civilized philosophy and enact a post-civilized society based on the premises therein, and then it goes on to list out the premises, which, if you want to read that, that is uh, post-civ, a brief philosophical and political introduction to the concepts of... No, that isn't. Which one is that? That is post-civ, a deeper exploration by... these. This is one thing I hate about these motherfuckers. They have cringe names. They have terrible names. Usul the Blackfoot. Kill yourself. What the fuck? Why would you write? Why would you make that your name? You could have chosen any name. That's so stupid. There's also um, strangers in a tangled wilderness. Uh, they write good stuff, but that's a stupid fucking name. No one's gonna take you seriously if you call yourself strangers in a tangled wilderness. Come on, bro. Oh, there's a whole bunch of shit. There's a whole bunch of shit in here. There's just so much shit in this fucking internet. There's so much stuff on the internet that it's all full of it. It's all full of information. What are we supposed to fucking do with this? Now, I've been reading a lot of post-civ and anti-civ texts. So there's there's a few different things going on here. Um, okay, firstly, I'll say this video was originally in my head going to be a well-written video essay. Then that was like not happening because I can't be bothered. It would just, it would, that would be a massive project. That would be a huge project. If I was going to make this a, vi a video essay and also say all the things I wanted to say, it would be a huge, that would be like a month long project to do it properly. And I don't want to do things properly. What the fuck am I? Someone who does things properly? No. I'm no thank you. Uh, so that's not happening. So now I was like, I'll record a series of videos where I give, you know, well planned out talking points, maybe to some sort of PowerPoint presentation. And then I thought, what if instead of all of those things, I do a completely unstructured ramble where, uh, you know, I make massive logical leaps, jump from, from, uh, from conversation topic to conversation topic with wild abandon and uh, all around make it quite difficult to understand the points I'm making due to a complete lack of structure and then just say I'm doing schizo analysis so no one can criticize me. And I thought, that's a fucking great idea. I'll just do that. <laughs> so this is a schizoanalytical look at a critique of civilization and post-civilization. My personal, you know, 
these sorts of things. Various avenues, there are avenues, right? And some of them are very heavily linked and some of them aren't very linked at all. So for example, you've got post-civ, anti-civ, and primitivism. These are all like somewhat linked. Post-civ people don't like primitivists. Primitivists kind that, you know, all primitivists are anti-civ, not all anti-civs are primitivist. Uh, and some anti-civs are post-civ, but not all post-civs are anti-civ. No, all post-civs are anti-civs, not all post-civs no post-civs are primitive. It's very confusing. There's a bunch of words. So post... I, I kind of hate the word post-civ, even though I just used it to describe myself not long ago, because the whole point of this whole thing is to reject progressivism, uh, but post-civ implies progressivism, so I don't like that. But I'm still going to use the word because I can't think of anything better. Uh, so, you know, we could just generalize this as anti-civ thought, anything against civilization in any form, you know, whether it wants to be primitive, you know, it's all anti-civ in some sense. So, uh, primitivists obviously want to return to a primitive state of being, uh, you know, I'm not going to spend this whole video criticizing them, I could, but I'm not going to, I have lots, I'm not a primitivist, uh, but you know, there are a lot of people who are, they're not, not that many, they exist though, we're not going to spend much time worrying about them though, because you know, they're kind of they're over there doing their own thing, they're not really related to me, they hate technology, I love technology. Um, Anti-Civ people, a lot of them hate technology too. Even the post-Civ people, a lot of them hate technology. In my opinion, they're all idiots, but whatever. Who am I? Who am I? What do I know? Only everything in the universe, because I'm fucking Jesus Christ reborn. We, we got these Civ, these Civs, right? We got these Civs, the posts and Antis, right? Antis just want to destroy civilization, that's what it's all about. Post-Civs want to, you know, they might want to be primitivist, they might want to be positive, they might want to do something new, they might want to do something old, they might want to, you know, not do anything, just destroy civilization for a sort of, like, nihilist, insurrectionary, just like, fuck it, burn it all down, we can figure it out later. That kind of situation, you know, they have, they vary. Then you've got post-civs who are like, here, we want to do something which is not like civilization, and a little closer to pre-civilization, but also not like pre-civilization, because they had all sorts of fucked up shit too, so we're gonna sort of do our new thing that isn't really civilization, but it's not primitive either, it's like a whole new thing that we're making up. And I like that, I like that thing, I like that, that's good. Um, I particularly like the sort of more practical, pragmatic side of post-civ, where they say like, um, uh, sort of short-term goals. This is a thing, like, and by short term, I mean short term after the destruction of civilization, which is kind of long term. But this idea of like, you can live for a pretty damn long time, like scavenging the resources of civilization. We could easily, you know, it would take a long time till we run out of scrap metal to use, for example. There's one thing that they say, and they, they like to hammer on about. Um, if you want to read more, uh, there's Beyond Civilized and Primitive, and uh, the thing by Strangers in a Tangled Wilderness, and all of those, they're all good. You can find them. Uh, I'll do a big link in the description of all of the bunch of text to read, um, if you're interested in this. Uh, so, those are, those are some things. Then there's also, like, some stuff, some of me, where I'm, like, accelerationist, and, like, uh, you know, uh, what's it called? Cyber nihilism? Cyber nihilism, accelerationism, xenofeminism, these isms, right? We got the sieves on this side, the isms on that side. <laughs> we got the sieves, the sieves. They got they got anti post and pre, which are called primitive, you know. Then we got the isms. You got accelerationism, nihilism, feminism, uh, fucking delusionism, <laughs> schizophrenism. You know all of the isms. They're over there as well, hanging out. And I like both of them. I'm in the middle. They're coming in my ears. They're like. They're like angel and devil on my shoulder. You got Nick Land, the devil on my shoulder, going like, accelerate everything, go fast. Then you got Ted Kaczynski on the other shoulder going like, actually, primitive people have already worked around 60 hours a week, the same as modern people, because if you have you have to take into account not only hunting and gathering, but also preparing and uh, preserving the food, and also other jobs like, um, you know, moving, if you're in a manic society, childcare, all of these other situations probably added up to around the same workload as a modern person. You got these two people on my fucking shoulder just shouting at me all the time and I'm going nuts. And that's why I made this video. We got this whole situation. Now, civilization is bad. Where am I going with this? I forgot. I have notes. Oh, yes. So, my point isn't civilization is the worst thing ever and everyone in the past, you know, like there's this, the worst anarchist text I've ever read probably the worst, one of the worst things I've ever read is this text called Bolo Bolo fucking atrocious, starts off by like 
Firstly, it's awful. It's written awfully. The ideas are, like, bad, but they're not, like, the worst thing I've ever read, but it's written so stupidly. The guy makes up stupid-sounding words like bolo bolo for no fucking reason when he could use real words instead. I don't know what he's doing. I don't know what he's thinking. And he starts it off by saying, like, people in the past worked four minutes a day and they basically lived in heaven and then they just decided to do agriculture one day for no reason and threw it all away. But, hey, what can we do about that? Like, it's so stupid. Oh, yeah, they just decided to do agriculture one day for no reason and then never went back when it was shit. And now I've seen so many fucking anthems and all of these people trying to, ex like, explain why agriculture happened. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. I'm going to throw my hat in the ring. My theory as to why agriculture sort of caught on because the thing about agriculture is it sucked big time at first it was shit right all the fucking grains and like you know wheat and all of these things that we eat you know they've been selectively bred for literally thousands and thousands of years to be good for farming and we still have crop shortages we still have famines and crop failures and all of this shit right back in the day they were way harder to grow they were way less fruitful, so you got less per plant. The, they were less calorific, like they even this what you did get didn't have as much calories and you know nutritional value in it. And they didn't have techniques like crop rotation. They didn't know what the fuck was going on. They had nothing. Why did they like how they managed to even make it work at all is a fucking miracle. It must have been ridiculously hard, like to even sustain yourself, fucking growing grains back in the day, why did they fucking do it? When we, they already had a, like, no one can answer this, and I'll, I'll throw my answer out. I've heard really stupid people, I've heard some stupid arguments. Well, I've heard someone say that they, they switched to agriculture because they all became alcoholics and they couldn't live without alcohol, so they had to keep farming grain. I've heard that argument made unironically, that that is why industrial, I mean, agricultural civilization happened, because everyone in the world <laughs> became an alcoholic and so, in order to feed their addiction, they had to keep farming grain. Boggles the mind. Anyway, my theory, and to be honest, lots of other theories about the rise of agriculture are probably true as well, and I don't think I'm the first person to think of this, but my theory is that agriculture popped up because it's a very good way to feed an army. Now, war, here's something else that will trigger the primitivists. So primitivists like to argue that uh, primitive war was like mostly ritualistic and most people were basically fine and didn't really get injured and it was not very dangerous and it was more like light-hearted fun where sometimes someone got injured or killed but most of the time it was more of a ritual thing and it also didn't happen very often because you know all of these arguments that like yeah and they, they, it was basically all love and peace back then fucking bullshit bull fucking shit primitive war was extremely brutal and quite regular, more regular than war in our society. Like, war was happening all the time, it was very brutal, it was fucking atrocious, you didn't want to be in it, it was awful. Military power was extremely important back then. And so, having a large army who were a dedicated fighting force, who you could feed with grain and, you know, farmed agricultural food, rather than ha them having to go out and hunt half the fucking, you know, time, and not have time to be... What I'm saying is, it's great. Agriculture is great if you want to feed a big army. And, you know, this is where some people might be like, well, Genghis Khan, oh, sorry, as a, a big, 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 I was debating whether I should make this joke or not because it's so stupid. Uh, so Genghis Khan, the way his, his name should be pronounced is Chinggis Khan, and I was going to call him Big Chinggis, right? <laughs> but that's the dumbest joke I could possibly make, and so I'm not going to make it. That joke is not going to happen. So Big Chinggis you know, he used to have this idea that he, him and his Mongols won all their fights because they were eating meat and the peasant armies he was fighting against were eating gruel and grains. And so they were much stronger and fitter, whereas the grain-based diets of the peasants, you know, made them weak. This didn't fucking matter back in prehistory because it was all about numbers. It doesn't matter if your, you know, your diet is not as good, you're not eating as much meat as the other tribe. If you have a fucking army of a hundred people against fifty, the 100 people army is most likely going to win. Like, it just sheer numbers were more important back then because there was very little military technology. The horse, right, like, that was military technology that didn't exist yet. Um, you know, spears were basically all you had. And uh, maybe, like, oh, fuck, atlatls? Is that what they're called? Do you know what I'm talking about? Atl atlatls. 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 
the the Atlatl is a weird fucking phoneme. Atlatls. Um, uh, you know, and like maybe some slingshots or whatever, but they had very minimal military technology. It was mostly just raw numbers game. And if you had more numbers, you defeat the enemy and then you can conquer their lands and turn it into more place to farm to feed your army and maybe enslave the captured enemy to work on that farm. And that is my theory about how agriculture rose and spread. Uh, you know, I don't know how much that actually reflects the truth. I know that my I'm pretty right about primitive warfare being extremely brutal. I've done actually, actually done fucking research on that, unlike everything else in this video. I don't remember what the fuck I was just talking about. This video is a complete failure. This was supposed to be a good detailed fucking video, and it's not. It's not a good detailed video. I have more stuff. Uh, something like this, something like this. Specialized military was important. We know they had big military contests, but, uh, conquests back there, back then. Stuff like the Bantu conquest and whatever. I know it's a controversial subject, but it exists. At least it would happened in some sense. Uh, okay. Uh, there's a big difference between sort of me and Anprims, which is, you know, there's a big difference in ideology between there was this primitive utopia or primitive utopia is reachable versus civilization just sort of has some problems and maybe there are other ways to do things. Like, there's a big difference between those two ideologies. I am in the second camp. I'm just squarely in the second camp. Like, the that civilization is not the only way to do things. In fact, it's only a very brief experiment, really, in the long, in the grand scheme of things. And, you know, I'm not saying we need to go primitive utopia, stone age type of situation. I'm saying, you know, just being critical of civilization here and, you know, saying like, okay, Imagine a conversation with a Marxist and me, right? Here's what would happen. The Marxist, I'd say, so what's your plan? What are you going to do? The Marxist goes, well, first we're going to do general strike to hit the capitalists where it hurts. Oh, fucking great. Yeah. What's next? Okay, then we're going to uh, arm ourselves and seize the means of production. Yes. Nice. I like it. What's next? We're going to set up a worker's state uh, so that we are in control and we have seized power and seized the military so that we can drive the capitalists out of control. Nice. I love it. Keep going. What's next? Uh, what do you mean? No, no. But like, what do you do after that? What do you do after you've, you know, you're the worker state, you know, everything's great. You're doing social programs, uh, helping people. But then, then what do you do? Oh, no, that's it. That's final. That's the final stage. The state will like wither away, you know, like Hogwarts magic. You know, it's magic. <laughs> the state will wither away and then everything will be great. Okay, but what about, like, imminent environmental destruction? Uh, like, what are you going to do about technological and industrial civilization? What do you... Uh, wind farms? We're going to do some wind farms and clean uh, thorium energy? Yeah, do you see what I'm getting at? Do you see what I'm getting at? Like, what are you going to do to abolish society? I don't know, says the Marxist. Well, uh, look, bud. <laughs> I'm sorry to tell you, but uh, we have a few differences, you and I. There we go, that's a little thing that I wanted to say. Uh, uh, convincing... Okay, here's another thing, although I don't know what this is supposed to mean. Convincing people that something that will make their life harder actually makes it better it is very difficult, because it's true that we have a lot of conveniences within civilization that would be very hard to replicate without civilization. Uh, one example being this, this guy. I got this from Amazon. I ordered it the night before and it came in under 12 hours. It's a, And this is like an advanced, relatively, piece of technological equipment. A one terabyte hard drive would have been unimaginable for a consumer to even own a one terabyte hard drive. You know, not even 30 years ago, that would have been complete unimaginable. And now I can order one on Amazon and it comes in, you know, under 12 hours directly to my doorstep. Don't even have to, you know, this sort of thing. That's a great convenience and I love it not really something you can do without civilization, that sort of thing. It's very hard to convince people to give that sort of thing up and that it's actually bad in any way because it seems good and it is good. I got my thing that I need quickly. That's good. But I would put it in a similar way to sort of like exercise or eating vegetables. Like doing exercise sucks, eating vegetables kind of sucks, but like you got to do it or you'll die. It's the same sort of thing, like, yeah, I would love to just eat pizza all the time, but if I do that, 
I'll die. <laughs> I would love to continue industrial civilization, but if we do that, we will wipe out everything on the planet, including ourselves. You know, maybe not everything. There'll be extremophiles that are still chilling, you know, but it's not, you know, it's not a good idea. The death machine. It's a death machine. It requires ecocide and genocide to function. Every death by car crash that's ever happened is a murder because we built cities, we, someone with a name and an address a hundred years ago, the Henry Ford, <laughs> decided to make a place where everything's too far apart to get to without a car so they could sell more cars. And then cars started hitting people and they just die and now they're dead because someone decided to build things far away because they wanted to sell cars and now the cars are polluting the environment and uh, they are causing global warming which is then causing rising sea levels which are flooding small island nations driving people out of their homes you know, some die, some immigrate into other countries where they live in poverty and die these are all interlinked, it's all murder, it's all murder is my point this is all murder that's happening, right? don't like murder, not big fan of it, not the biggest fan of it uh, you know Every person that dies in continually worsening California wildfires can blame this on the industrialists and the fucking agriculturalists from back in the day. Because it's all murder. It wouldn't have happened if they hadn't taken reckless actions. Do you know what I'm trying to say here? Civilization, you know, there was, there was this phrase, I don't know if you've ever heard of it, the Industrial Revolution and its consequences have been a disaster for the human bloody race, haven't they now? Come on, come on, haven't they? So that's something. So eat your fucking veggies and destroy civilization is what I'm trying to tell you. Now, I have some extremely hot takes that most anti civ and post-civ people don't agree with. Like, I love computers, big into computers. Everyone says, can't have computers without civilization. I say, well, I think we could put it off. Do you know why I think we could put it off? I don't think we could put it off at scale, but over oh, computers require international trade. There's been international trade since long before civilization, although there were no nations, but there has been long distance trade for a very long time. Um, a very, very long time. Uh, it's not actually that difficult, it just takes a lot longer without modern technology and without civilization and sort of bureaucracy and all of this sort of thing. It takes a lot longer and is a lot harder to, you know, manage at large scale, but it is still possible, very possible in fact. Um, you know, you can still do it, it's just difficult. And so we couldn't have computers on the same scale we do now, but I solved that problem by simply saying, oh, okay, well firstly, it wouldn't really matter because computers wouldn't be built for planned obsolescence, they would last a lot longer, that's the first thing. Secondly, even without civilization, we still have the scrap of civilization that we could use to build computers, even though you know mining operations and that sort of thing would be uh, very difficult. You can salvage you know, rare earth metals and you know plastics and all this sort of stuff from existing scrap, and that won't go away for a long time. Um, you know, that's one thing. Um, but another thing is, you can do this sort of, you know, international trade and very complex uh, things without, you know, at small scale, and solve the fact that there's a small scale by simply saying, yeah, normies shouldn't be allowed to use computers. <laughs> Oh, you can't have computers and technology at scale? Then don't have it at scale. Have it in small scale, give it to the people who need them and know what the fuck they're doing. Normally shouldn't be allowed to use computers. It was a mistake making computers, you know, user-friendly at all. They should be impossible to use so that only I can use them and talk to myself on, you know, on the internet, where I talk to myself. The internet is just a mirror where I write something in and it writes the exact same thing back to me in the form of a question. And that's how I, that's how I want to live in that world. You know, fuck, fuck normies having access to the internet. I want to live in a world where I get my computer, which was, you know, made by a worker's co-op in fucking Thailand or whatever. Um, and then I get, I get it and it will last me uh, five generations down the line on one charge because of magic 
and I get on my computer and I go on the internet, I type in theinternet.com and it comes up and I say hello and then it, has to, it writes back hello question mark and I just have a conversation with it and all it does is repeat my what I say back to it in the form of a question. That's all I want. That's all I fucking want. Is it that hard? Is that that hard to do? Is that actually hard to do? No, that's easy to do is what that is. It's, it's actually easy to do. Um, so let's bear that in mind next time someone tells you something that that's easy to do. Um, another thing is bicycles. You know, I'd be like, bicycles are fucking great. They're the most effective form of land transport ever invented. What the fuck problem do you have with bicycles? And then Adam Prim say, well, you need rubber for the tires and that's illegal. And I say, fuck you. Fuck you. Bicycles are great. Fuck you. I like bicycles. You're going to ban bicycles now? Who's going to listen to you? Who's going to listen to you? Come on. You're worse than the vegans. It's one of the reasons why I don't like civilization. They treat animals like shit. They treat animals really badly. I'm a big fan of animals. I like chickens. They're very cute. You ever, you ever pet a chicken? You ever hold a chicken in your hands? They're there. They're fluffy. It's crazy. It's crazy. Dogs? They're nice. Uh, cows? They're chilling. Don't factory farm them. You know, let them be a, let them chill. Make friends with them and then kill and eat them. That's what it's all about. I don't know what the fuck I'm going on about anymore. This was supposed to be a serious video where I expunge my tastes, but there's no... At some point, it stopped being a serious video uh, when I realised that I can't... I'm not a very serious person. Can't really do serious for very long. It's kind of dry and unentertaining. If you want to read dry and unentertaining things, there's links in the description to read those. I'm not here to make more of those. I'm here to have fun. I think we could even keep the internet going after civilization. It would be different. It would be more like, more like mesh networks, but I think it would work. I actually think it would work. I also don't think we need to completely abolish markets. I think they can exist in some form. I've got all sorts of opinions. None of them are communism. Uh, you know, I like some of communism. I like uh, worker ownership of the means of production. Seems like a good idea until they throw that word in. The, the word that ruins it all. You know, worker ownership of the means of production. Oh, great. Love that. Democratic ownership. Oh, ooh, democracy. Um, no, did you have to no, um, no, Not so into that, really. You could do that over there. But don't involve me. Come on. Come on now. Don't involve me in all that. I've run out of notes. I've run out of fucking notes. Everyone. I don't know what the fuck I was going to say there, but anyway. <laughs> um, wh what else? Civilization's bad. Do I have to explain why civilization's bad? We're, we're like 30 minutes, we're like, we're like 36 minutes in, I haven't even explained that. I tried by reading some things, but they didn't explain it very well. Um, I mean, I already I explained it, that like, civilization requires ecocide and genocide. <sighs> here, 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 let me just, did I even read this already? Um, let me see, let me see if I can find this shit. Uh, the deserts of Central and Southwest Asia and the Mediterranean used to be forests. Ancient empires... Shut the fuck up, phone! Uh, the deserts of Central and Southeast a Southwest Asia and the Mediterranean used to be forests. Ancient empires cut them down to burn the wood to smelt metal for weapons, ships to build... For weapons and to build ships, which they used to conquer their neighbors. This has been the pattern of every successful civilization in history. To transform the life of the earth into larger human populations that must conquer and deplete more land to survive. Spreading like a cancer over thousands of miles, destroying every habitat and culture in their path until they go totally mad, exhaust their land base, and crash. That is a pretty accurate description of civilization. It's very unsustainable, doesn't work very well, and requires, you know, people to die for it to keep happening. It literally requires human death and animal death and plant death. It requires death. It is a death machine. That is the point of the title of this video. Civilization is a death machine. Why is the fucking frame rate so low? Yeah, you're console gamers anyway, you're used to this sort of thing. Come on, wow, that was a big frame rate drop. Anyway, well, uh, so civilization's bad, it literally requires ecocide and genocide and, you know, human death, animal death, plant death, uh, infinite expansion, not just capitalism, all civilization requires this. Even your communist civilization, unless your communist civilization involves mass deaths, um, then you're shrinking, I guess, your usage of the planet, and most communist civilizations do involve mass deaths. So, um, you know, you're doing that at least. You're helping shrink the population that's helping the planet a bit, I guess. But, I mean, you could be doing better. Like me, I'm doing better. Now, I'm not, like, some people, listen, do you know what one thing I'm really not saying? And I don't know why people seem to think this. I'm not saying, yep, 
Seven billion people, go out, you're all hunters now. No, I'm no one saying that. No one's saying that. Maybe some, maybe some anthems are saying that. I'm not fucking saying that. No one in their right mind would say that. That's a terrible idea. All I'm saying is, maybe, you know, there are other ways to do things that aren't the same as civilization. Progress is nonsense. No big fan of it. Don't think it's real. Time is an illusion. We're all trapped in an endless prison. We need to abolish the human, abolish civilization unconditionally. I don't give a fuck how you do it. I don't give a fuck. I like cyber nihilism, but also I think I think accelerationism is post civ. I think accelerationism is post fucking civ. Any type of accelerationism you want. Okay, not any type. Uh, not the sort of like Marxist accelerationism or like left accelerate. Not that. Uh, but the accelerationism that's like about exploding capital. Remember, right? The, you remember the, the Chad? You remember Chad? Remember Chad from the beginning of the video? That? That's accelerationism. Big fan of that. Big fan of that. I think it's positive. Because I, I think along with ex exploding capitalism, it'll explode civilization. The accelerationist definition of capitalism is very wide. Like, Nick Land says capitalism is whenever you do something well, competently. Whenever you do something and you have more of it than you... When you when you make a profit on anything, when you make a surplus on anything, that's capitalism. That's what he says. So, um, you know, if you, want to, if you want to call it that, then all the civilization is based on this expansionist um, feedback loop, positive feedback loop, and uh, that's acceleration. That's what all that's what all accelerationism is all about. I think accelerationism is very blatantly positive. I even think Deleuzian uh, post-anarchism, you know, if you want to call it that, post-structuralist anarchism, Deleuzian stuff, is also positive. Um, because a lot of the stuff he criticizes are like, you know, from a certain angle, basically civilization. So, uh, you know, I think you might already be supposed to if you, and you might not have even noticed it. I haven't talked too much about history in this video. Uh, there are, like, if I wanted to spend more time critiquing anthems, I could spend more time critiquing anthems, but they're not, they're not watching. <laughs> we know you're not watching. You, you're out in the forest uh, having fun, so... Oh, no, let's be honest, you're on Twitter, but you wish you were out, and you're LARPing, you're pretending you're out in the forest having fun. If you actually are out in the forest having fun, good on you, good on you, but you're probably not. If I were to describe my ideology, it would be me on a ThinkPad, on a ThinkPad me, ThinkPad me, with, you know, maybe like NetBSD or something on it, or, I mean, it doesn't matter, any sort of Linux or BSD or you know, non-proprietary operating system, although I suppose maybe an FSF approved OS would be the real, you know, ideological purity here, but I, I don't care too much about that. Um, but that that's the idea, some sort of free software running laptop, ThinkPad, Casio F91W, sitting on a rock in the fucking forest, solar charging my laptop, reading a visual novel on my ThinkPad. That is my ideology. Everything else is inconsequential. Oh, also, I'm doing drugs. <laughs> doing drugs, sitting on a rock in the forest, you know, birds chirping, me in the middle of it all, headphones on, ThinkPad, Linux, charging solar panel, I mean, playing, playing Magikoi or whatever the fuck I'm reading, I'm still reading Magikoi. Like, come on. That's my ideology. Fuck everything else. Fuck everything else. Maybe reading a book, if you want. But computers are great. I don't understand Anthems. They don't like computers. And Luke Smith's an Anthem. What's wrong with him? What's wrong with him? He's retarded. I don't know what the fuck he's on about. His video where he talked about, like, uh, what is freedom anyway, I think it was called. That was one of the worst videos I've ever, ever fucking seen. Worst, stupidest videos I've ever seen. He makes terrible points in that video. Sometimes his philosophical videos are decent. That one is awful. Um, anyway, th 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 we can ignore all that. Uh, goodbye.